down in the ranch country where we had the most blessed graduation I've ever seen with maybe 200 awards given to the boys that had come and in just nine months or ten turned into wonderful young citizens and fine and wonderful singing Christians and yet tonight at midnight the demise will have to take place. Next door to this church, the loveliest dormitory, one million dollars worth of dormitory, wall-to-wall -wall carpet and almost wall-to-wall -wall girls. But tonight at midnight means the end of a blessed ministry if the state is to have its way. We talk about inspection. We had 14 assistant attorney generals here, plus the governor and plus the attorney general sitting on this platform, commenting, admitting that we were doing a great work. Finest homes, finest facilities, healthiest girls, happiest looking people, and they said these homes must continue. When I went to Austin at the invitation of our governor, he said to me in his office with Mr. Mark White and one of our lawyers, he said, Brother Olaf, and in his uh, sweet and precious way, the governor said, Brother Olaf, there's something in the Bible somewhere that says that you ought not to swallow a camel and strain at a gnat. And he said, Brother Olaf, as much as I said, Governor, that gnat that you was talking about is the biggest gnat I've ever heard of. I said, that's my conscience. That's my obedience to Jesus. And I said, as I raised this old book up, I said, when I take a license, this book will go in the first garbage can. And this old preacher with his hair just about going to walk out and never preach again. And I said, you may not understand, but when I can't put my Bible first in Jesus, Lord, go by the Holy Spirit and obey him, I said, I'll never preach again. The governor looked at me, and as best I remember, he said, I understand. And folks, that's what the battle's all about. Amen. Now then, you say, what you going to do, Brother Olaf? We plan to keep on keeping on. Amen. The question could be raised, have you ever thought about whether you're right or not? Let me share with you quickly. I believe I could say as humbly as I know how to say. And I know he's listening. If God is right, I'm right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If Christ is right, I'm right. Amen. If the Holy Spirit is right, I'm right. Amen. If this old book is right, Amen. I'm right. Amen. If the Constitution is right, I'm still right. If the church is right, I'm right. If God's people and all the preachers that are here tonight, if they're right, I'm right. We believe alike. And all these folks have come to say, Brother Olaf, we want you to just keep on standing. Now then, you'd say, what can be done? What I've said to everybody. A preacher called me who has a license. He said, what can I do? I said, surrender your license. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't talk about it. Just give it back to him. Amen. Man called me bawling and squalling. He said, Brother Olaf, they've taken my license away from me and I can't get it renewed. I said, write him a thank you letter. Yeah. Let me tell you something. 
If the preachers had have done seven years ago what they're doing now, Amen. the battle would have been over right. in less than 12 months. I'd have never gone to the Nueces County Jail. I'd have never been sentenced to jail three times in the city where I've lived more than 35 years. You say, what's your crime? I haven't put the legal sign up on the wall. That's what they have to put up in Russia. You news media, if you all had the sense you ought to have, I'll guarantee you one thing. You'd go ahead and fight the battle for us because you're not going to own your own television station. The government, the doctors are quitting the medical ministry because they know they have no freedom left. The farmers are discouraged because they sold their birthright for a mess of state parties. A lot of pastors have lost their conscience and can't do anything but make a speech or bring a little devotional because they lost their conscience somehow. If God be God, serve Him. Why hold you between two opinions? The state, let her run her own institution, but let the church run it. If the fruit yeah. makes us right, we're right. Amen. I want something that works. Yeah. And but I want to tell you, I could never let the DHR in here Amen. because they don't have any standards. Yeah. Right. There's nothing Christian about DHR. Right. 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 That D could stand for depraved. Yeah. 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 I mean, we might as well face it. You'd say, where'd you get that? Well, I notice here where Mr. P. Young, the vice president and director of human resources, suite 474 West Century Building, San Antonio, Texas, said E-O-E-M-F-H, that's equal opportunity, male, female, H, that means homosexual. Yeah. I can never endorse the, the uh, organization the DHR that recognizes homosexuals and lesbians. That's sin. God burned some cities off of the map when they tried to rape heaven, and you know it. The DHR is not spiritual. They're not scriptural. They have no Christ. They have no Bible. They have no God. They have no hope. They have no morals. They have nothing. And the quicker we run it out of this country, the better off we will be. Listen, you know who the lawbreakers are? The people that have ignored the Word of God. They call this brainwashing. You know who the, the, the lawbreakers are? They're the people that have completely ignored the Constitution of the United States. Did you know the, the First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or the exile thereby? Reckon what happened to that? And so as we close the service tonight, As your days, so shall your strength be. We ask God's people to pray. Some of the preachers said today, Brother Olaf, let's form a line with a Bible in our hand. Not a gun, not a pistol, not a stick, not a rod of violence. Let's take the old book and just stand and line up and let them break through the Bible in order to get the girls. The second line of defense would be the parents who gave life to their children and brought them here and say, we're not going to fight, we're not going to hurt anybody, but y'all will have to walk over mother and daddy to get my little girl. I'm asking you not to do it. Leave them where we put them. Is there anything un-American about that? Is there anything that would bring this old flag down? for us doing like that. No, don't you believe this old flag with this red, white, and blue, don't you believe it was raised by men? Yes, sir. Amen. Dear friends, if the 
pilgrim forefathers in the May if they were right, we're right. Yes, sir. If Paul Revere was right that midnight, I'm right. If George Washington was right, I'm right. If Patrick Henry was right, I'm right. If Roger Williams was right, if James Madison and Jane and and Stonewall Jackson, if they were right, surely we must be right. Yes, Somebody's changed in this country. But oh, listen, this old book never changes. And I close the message tonight. I know victory's got to come. And I know it's not God's will for these homes to close. And I'm not going, dear friend, to just give up. And I'll never surrender my conscience. I'll never trade off what I've got for a little license. I cannot. Unscriptural, un-American, and unspiritual, and unworkable, and unreasonable. And so let's stay with the old book. Let's stand together. Evening and morning and at noon Yes And so they stood for four days in the sweltering heat and hot sun of South Texas the preachers stood protecting the church and the girls from being taken over by the state on Friday afternoon of that same week an agreement was reached between Brother Olaf and the Attorney General that permitted Brother Olaf to place the girls in private Christian homes of his choosing rather than turn them over to the state of Texas. He would close the Rebecca and Anchor home while reorganizing to bring all his ministries under the direct auspices of the People's Baptist Church, Incorporated, thus satisfying the court in at least the agreed judgment with Roloff Evangelistic Enterprises. The girls were sent away. Some have already disappeared from their parents' homes to go back onto the streets and into sin. The Human Resources Task Force was dispersed. They came at one time during the week within three minutes of confrontation with the preachers, but Texas Governor Bill Clements stood firm and ordered them not to break through any human barricades, nor were they allowed to enter the church where the girls were. The girls were safe as long as they were in the church. The following week, the Department of Human Resources representatives visited the Rebecca home to satisfy themselves that Brother Roloff had indeed complied with the ruling of the court. Mr. Johnson, what, what exactly are you planning on doing today? We're going to talk to Reverend Roloff and his people right now. As Brother Roloff pointed out in his message, it was like inspecting or monitoring God and the work of Christ divinely led by the Holy Spirit. All these ministries were built without tax monies. They belong to God's people and churches and pastors all over the world who have supported and prayed for their continuance. The inspection was made. The girls were gone, all but five. Brother Roloff had been led to believe that he could keep at least five and that these girls somehow could keep the home alive until the others could be returned. But in the end, during this inspection, he was told he could not keep even these five. They would be permitted to roam the streets or stay any place they chose except at the Rebecca home. They would not be allowed to stay at Rebecca even if they chose of their own free will. As the inspection led to the Rebecca Christian Academy adjacent to the Rebecca dormitory, Brother Olaf was interviewed at the trophy case by local news reporter Mia Squilla of Channel 10. As we look at the trophies, but that's not the main trophies. The main trophies are the girls. Where are they today? 